Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, July 25th. So today we have the moon in Aquarius still, still in this full moon energy. The moon will be going void, of course, 8.15 p.m. this evening and making its way into Piscean energy. But that won't really take place until early hours Monday morning. So we have to talk about a couple of things here. We still are very much in the full moon energy. Hopefully we have a little bit more physical energy than we did yesterday coming down from that very potent full moon that we had on Friday. So this phase that we're in is still illuminating for us some details that we really have to consider before we go on and we move forward. A lot of new information is coming in for us, changing the way that we think and that we feel. So we're still very much in the phase of recognizing the good, what has been working. And of course, with that, we get illuminated to what is not so good and what hasn't been working. The moon in Aquarius, of course, is great to emotionally detach us from some of the situations that we're overwhelmed with in order for our mental planes to get a bigger, greater, grander vision without being too bogged down by our emotions. The moon is making six out of nine cosmic aspects here today. And right out of the gate, we actually start off with Mercury making the very first first aspect of the day. Now, Mercury is in Cancer. He only has two days left in this cancer and energy, which Lord, thank goodness, because we cannot take any more tears, any more, you know, flashbacks, any more memories coming up, any more communication errors between, oh, our family dynamics. Who else? I'm raising my hand in case you you can't see. Um, Who else has had some major family drama come up? throughout cancer season and while mercury has been in cancer too making it very hard to communicate effectively in order to clear some of these things up so thankfully for us mercury is about to wrap up his time in this cancer and energy and give us a couple of opportunities to wrap up the life lessons here before he jumps into leo energy So right out of the gate, Mercury, who is very much in his head, very much focused on, you know, our home, our family dynamic, focused on the new boundaries that we're trying to create and implement. He bumps into Jupiter and Jupiter is retrograde in Pisces. This is going to be the last time that these two guys get together. And realistically, we're exhausted. We want to kind of be done with these old thoughts, with these old attachments, with these old memories. We're just done. And Jupiter, of course, wants us to grow and wants us to expand our mental plane, expand our vision. Now, this is going to give us a very good opportunity to jump into a new vision, a new dream that we've been working hard to actually manifest. However, because Jupiter is retrograde in Pisces, we have to listen to our intuition. Mercury in Cancer has been about trying to align the heart and the head. And Jupiter just wants to put more of a magnifying glass, a a, a volume all the way up more so on our intuition than anything else. This is really going to illuminate for us where there is a new potential to cut free from the old, to stop looping about, you know, old matters, to stop having the same conversations with the same people about the same emotions that we're feeling, not realizing that they're not respecting our boundaries. This is just another indicator that we have to work a little bit harder to not only communicate ourselves effectively and with a lot more clarity, but to actually be strong enough to stand next to what it is that we've been asking as far as new boundaries are concerned. Mercury in Cancer goes ahead and bumps into the true node right after its encounter with Jupiter. And this is a little bit of a not so nice time because, of course, Mercury in Cancer is losing steam, all kinds of caught up on the old attachments, where it is that we're afraid to try something new. The true node, of course, wants to show us where it is that we need to be in order to honor our soul's path, in order to be in the reality that we've been dreaming of. But of course, there's a lot of insecurities that are coming up for us. 
The fears are creeping back in. Mercury in Cancer is hella sensitive and it is very much picking up on our vulnerabilities and our insecurities and our fears to detach from the old, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's not healthy for us and put ourselves out there in a big, bold, brave way that we've been craving. Our higher self has been craving. But of course, our egoic identity, our avatar here in this physical realm is just a little tiny bit hesitant to kind of cut the cord from the old and to step firmly in the new. So we get a little bit of a hand here because the moon in Aquarius jumps in. Of course, the moon in Aquarius emotionally detached so that we can process information in our mental plane at a higher rate than letting our emotions bog us down. And the moon in, Quir in Aquarius bumps into Neptune in a retrograde in her place of power in Pisces. And this is a very sensitive, highly imaginative, big picture vision. It's almost as if we take the fears and the insecurities that are creeping in and we recognize, no, I've been working very hard to block that out. I've been working very hard to disconnect from that. I don't want to sit in that energy anymore. And so we do shift our heart and our head into thinking about the future. And when we do think about the future and we kind of, you know, push out the ego narrative and we align with our higher selves, that is when the beauty takes over. That is when our imagination takes over, where we start dreaming that bigger dream, that new reality that we want to be living in, when we focus in on the details of our new vision, and suddenly we're trying to pull ourselves back from the darkness, of course, to stand into the light. So the moon in Aquarius bumps into Mercury and says, you know, hey, Mercury, I know that you're running out of steam. I know that you're caught up in all the old. I know that you're caught up in all the fears and the insecurities. But guess what? We just tapped into the highest vision of where it is that we want to be moving into, into our future. And let me tell you, this is a huge learning lesson for us right now, because the problem is, is that we're not communicating with ourselves effectively first. We're really not clear between our heart and our head. And I think that because you've been put in some positions in order to voice your own emotional needs, your wants, your desires to other people, you've kind of been a little bit timid in doing so because you're really not clear within yourself on what it is you want, what it is you need, and what it is that you actually desire. Mercury is kind of taken back by this because you know, there's a tendency to not want to be accountable and responsible for realistically recognizing that we haven't done the inner work necessary in order to get that clear vision for ourselves. We haven't done as much work as we would need at this point to clearly define within ourselves what it is that we think, what it is that we're feeling. So of course, that's going to prevent us from speaking our truth and communicating our thoughts and our feelings to other people. So the moon is right. We are in a learning lesson here. And just as we have that realization, the moon in Aquarius bumps into Pluto. So Pluto is retrograde in Capricorn. He, he is the god of the underworld. He is showing us where it is that we have to transform, where we have to recognize the darker parts of us, cut the cord, put a certain death to them so that we can actually align with the new vision that we're looking to manifest. But this requires us to have boundaries and define those boundaries within us. Luckily, again, for us that the moon is in Aquarius, detaching a little bit from the emotional overwhelming intensity that we can get when the moon bumps into Pluto. And instead, we're going to take all of that up into the mental plane. We know where it is that we have to change the way that we think and have to change the way that we feel within ourselves before we can go out and start, you know, telling everybody our new realizations and our new boundaries and what needs to actually change. Right now, we're having this opportunity aha moment where it is that we need to kind of reorganize our thoughts and our feelings for the greater good of our highest selves and of course bringing that new dream and vision into our realities at this point after the moon bumps into pluto mercury in cancer opposes pluto sitting across from the table in a little bit of a confrontation and i'm going to tell you this isn't going to feel so good because this is when our shadow part comes out 
especially in our mental plane, showing us where it is that we are negative Nancy, where it is that we are holding on desperately to the old, where it is that we are making excuses for ourselves. This is a big deal because this is the stage that we're in. There's a huge amount of accountability that's going to happen to us this week because Mercury in Cancer, again, will come up with every reason of why we shouldn't change and why, you know, everything is fine and why it's okay to sacrifice our own wants, needs and desires for our family, for our loved one. Well, guess what? We have no right to complain then that we're not happy if we're choosing that. So Mercury in Cancer sitting across from the table from Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, showing us inside where it is that we've given our power away, where it is that we put other people's wants, needs, and desires before our own, where it is that we allow negative Nancy and manipulative, obsessive thinking to actually control our patterns and our behaviors, preventing us from actually moving forward. At this particular point, the moon in Aquarius now sits across the table from Mars in Leo. This is some intense energy here. And this is really going to kind of fire us up because we have just been we've just been caught, right? Mercury and Cancer sitting across from Pluto has illuminated for us where it is that we've been making excuses and we essentially have gotten caught in our own mental narrative where we've been allowing certain things to take place and yet praying for a different outcome, not being accountable for our thoughts, for the way that we've been communicating, for the way that we've been enforcing the new boundaries that we need to create and implement in order to protect ourselves. So the moon in Aquarius is now sitting across the table from Mars and Leo. And Mars and Leo, of course, is fired up. He just wants to take action. He's saying, screw this. Let's cut the head off the snake. Let's move forward. Doesn't matter if we have conversations that need to be had. Doesn't matter if we need to communicate ourselves. Let's just make a move. Let's take action. Let's move forward. The problem is here is this is going to trigger us to be impulsive. This is going to trigger us. If you do take action, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt because this energy wants us to push forward, not caring about the consequences. And we need to be calculated at this time. This new reality that we are currently trying to bring into you know, physical manifestation. This isn't like the past. This isn't like, oh, we'll try it. We'll see what's going to happen. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. No, we've had it with that. We want so badly to create a brand new earth for ourselves, for our loved ones, for humanity, that this time, this is our one shot to get it right. We have to be calculated. We have to plan. We have to be logical. And Mars and Leo doesn't want any of that. So we end up having an inner conflict because emotionally, we know that the bigger vision that we're having, the dream that we're trying to manifest needs a little bit more planning. And Mars and Leo does not want to plan. He just wants to move forward into the emotional battlefield, cut cords, cut conversations, just be done with it. And that essentially is not going to get us anywhere. So the moon in Aquarius goes ahead and bumps into Chiron. And of course, Chiron is now retrograde in Aries. He is the wounded healer. And after this little kerfuffle, if you will, um, we recognize where it is that we have to pause. We have to, we just need a timeout. We recognize now, especially because of Mercury and Cancer's aspects to, especially Pluto, mostly, um, that there is a huge need for us to heal, that our insecurities and our fears of cutting the cord to old toxic relationships and habits and ways of thinking and ways of being is scary as hell. And we're living in our emotional extremes right now because again, we feel that urgency. We want to make a change. We want to be living a new reality. However, the plan, the steps, the logic, the practicality of taking those calculated movements forward, we're not there yet. We don't have a solid plan together. So Chiron is illuminating for us, you know, whoa, think of all the times in, in the past that you just abandoned logic and practicality just to see what was going to happen and how badly it came back to bite you in your ass. I know it's overwhelming and exhausting and very, very much triggering our impatience 
on trying to wait for everything to align and for the perfect timing for us to make some major moves here. But we can't go ahead and get ahead of ourselves because we are going to ruin the beautiful opportunity that we have to create something special for ourselves moving forward. We literally have an opportunity to be living in a brand new reality with a brand new vibration, a brand new frequency that we have never felt before. So why are we going to rush it? This is not going to feel good because we have the want, need and desire to rush it. That's where that urgency comes in. But we can't we can't let it happen that way. So at this particular point, we might be a little bit down on ourselves, right? It's a little bit of an emotional day, again, still in the full moon energy, bringing to uh, bringing to light some of the darkness, some of the not so fun feelings and thoughts that we are having that we need to disconnect from in order to move into the new cycle. Luckily for us, the moon in Aquarius meets up with Jupiter Jupiter is in a retrograde in Aquarian energy, and this is really going to help us to get a boost because why? Well, we want more. We want that dream. We want that vision. We want to be happy. We want to be at peace. We want to feel harmony. We want to feel contentment. And we recognize now that if we get our actions in order first and we operate calculated and logically we're going to get there a lot sooner than just, you know, riding the wave of fury, making things happen. And then, of course, having to go back and clean up the mess that we made because we didn't think things out before we took action. So the moon in Aquarius conjunct sitting next to Jupiter. Jupiter is just magnifying how much more we want for ourselves, how bad we actually want to be living that dream and that vision. And because we want it so freaking bad, it triggers something in us. And we're more confident, we're more optimistic now that we're going to be able to slow our roll and do things right. We are more faithful and hopeful that we are aligned with something great in our future, that we have to sit in the uncomfortability of the present moment of that urgency of wanting to take action and not being allowed to do so. So. One thing that I want to kind of say to you before the day is done, this, especially towards the end of the day, triggers the day out of time event. So like I had kind of mentioned in the Ascension Symptom episode, we are essentially ending a cycle and beginning a new cycle. And because this is affecting the galactic new year and how it is that we're rolling over from one galactic calendar to the next, there is this beautiful point in time where literally we are living in the void, where everything and nothing matters, where we are connected and disconnected to nothing, where we are all and nothing, we are up and down, we are left or right, we are everything in the moment and nothing at all. And this particular energy, this vibration, this frequency is the very beginning stages of why we're having this euphoric feeling, why we're feeling like we are torn between our present moment and our futuristic moment. It literally feels like we are free floating. And because our ego physical avatar is unfamiliar with the cosmic energy and forces that create this particular void in time, we might get a little bit upset and festered. And that's why the emotions throughout the day kind of seem to be a little bit negative. We get a little bit of a peak, a little bit of a learning point, and then back down to the fears and insecurities. And what I think is beautiful is that we end this day off not only conjunct Jupiter, which is going to turn the volume up on all of the good feels that we need, all of the confidence, all of the hope, all of the optimism that we really need to embody before jumping into this brand new cycle. We also get this very mystical download of cosmic energy from the stars, from the cosmos, this divine intelligence is downloading us while we float in this very, very strange time period, downloading us with information that we are going to be integrating over the course of this week. So it is a very auspicious time. It is a very interesting energy. 
I would suspect that some of us are going to be divided again, like I talked about in the Ascension Symptom episode about the time split about, you know, among the awakened, you're going to figure out right now where it is that you're at in your path. If uncertainty and anxiousness and, you know, even fear is the last emotion that you're feeling as you go to bed that night, you have to recognize that this week is going to be a deep purge for you as we jump into a brand new cycle. If you are feeling fulfilled with optimism, with confidence, with hopefulness, you have to understand that you're now tapping into the higher vibrations of these light codes coming in. And this is a very exciting wave, a brand new energy for us to integrate in. And that will be your main struggle throughout the course of this week.